In this video, we're going to take a look at effects with Magic Cube. So we're going to start off by selecting our spot fixtures and locating them. When you're in the group window, on the top soft buttons in the middle, you'll find an add effects button. If you select add effects, we'll take you into our effects selection window. You have a choice here of effects by attribute. So that's intensity, dimmer type effects, position, movement effects, color, or beam effects, or any attribute. Inside any attribute, you'll find various different waveforms, things like ramp, sine, cosine, and so on. Selecting one of these effects will then ask you to choose the attribute of the fixture you want to apply it to. So apply your sine to the dimmer attribute. We're going to hit up folder here, and we're going to go into the position folder. Inside position, you'll find many different movement type shape effects. So things like circle, cross, figure of eight, tilt only, pan only. You'll also find palette effects at the top here, which are effects that reference palettes. I'm going to choose the circle effect. This has now done two things. In my programmer, it's added that circle effect to my spots, which you can see in the visualizer. It's also moved me in the Magic Cube software to my programmer window to the view effects view. This is so I can now modify the effect. The effect in the programmer, so I can leave it in the programmer, I could go back to my layout one, and maybe I want to zoom in those spots so I can see the beam a little better. So I'm going to go to the beam window on encoder D and just zoom down the spots, as you can see there. To go back and edit that fixture again in the programmer, or the effect in the programmer, I go to the programmer window and go to the view effects view. The view levels view is the one that we looked at earlier in a previous video when we were recording cues to see attributes in the programmer. So this other view here, view effects, will show you all active effects in your programmer. Inside this window, you can now modify the effect. So you've got various different modifiers for the effect around your encoder wheels, left and right side of the screen on the soft buttons. First off, on the top left, you've got spread control. The default is 100% spread. We could change that uh, using our encoder. We could wind that down to zero. At zero, we've now said we've got our circle effect, and we're essentially saying all 10 fixtures are at the same point moving around that circle. Taking the spread back up again, start spreading those fixtures around the circle up to 100% again, which then essentially is saying that all 10 spots are now evenly spread around that circle. We also have parts control, which splits our effect. If I bring the room to its side, you can see I now have two circle effects running, essentially the odd fixtures in one circle, the evens in the other. You can split parts down even further, three parts, four parts, and so on. And you can see for each part gives me a next circle. This is different to segments control, which groups fixtures together. So you can see as I go to two segments, I now have fixtures next to each other doing the same thing. So I've got the first two, fixtures three and four, five and six, as you can see in the visualizer. And you can mix parts and segments together. You also have direction control. So with a circle effect, we can have our fixtures moving forwards around the circle or backwards. You have odds going one way, evens another, a way of breaking up the effect. Evens and odds, left to right in selection order, right to left, segments, inverts, and a few other options as well here. I'm going to change this back to the default of forward. You also have the effect size. How big is the effect? Is it using the full range of pan and tilt for that circle effect? You can see as I bring that up, it now uses the full pan and tilt range. When you add an effect, it will do that effect around the fixture's current position. So if I bring the size of the effect down to say 20%, then I go to my position window and tilt my lights onto the back wall, you can see it will do the effect around the position that those fixtures are currently in. You also have crossfade control. If I take the crossfade down, you'll see the effect becomes more snappy in its position change. So moving from one position to another, less crossfade, less smooth, and all the way to zero where it will just snap between positions. And back up again. For speed of the effect, you've got two options. Either on your X encoder wheel, you've got effect speed, which you can adjust, or just above it, on the Y soft button here where it says tap to time, you can tap to time the speed of your effect. Effects can be recorded to cues just like anything else would be. So I could take the effect I've got running, 
I could add some colour on top of it, and I could go and record it onto a playback as I would with anything else. To set the name of it, again, set, select, and I'm going to call that circle effect. And I can run that playback, and there's my effect stored. Let's talk a little bit about dimmer type effects. So if I now grab my spots, locate them again, release the playback 10 that I recorded, and go to add effect, and select intensity. Here I'm just going to choose a basic dimmer effect, the dimmer chase. And you can see at this point, nothing is seen happening in my visualizer. That's because it's trying to add to the base value. I've already got my lights at 100%, and I'm trying to add an effect on top of that, which you can't see. So I'm going to change the add column here instead of plus to minus. And this allows my effect to subtract from the base value. And again, you've got the same modifiers around on your encoders, things like spread, part, segment, speed, size. But you've got replaced here the direction with a width. So how wide is that effect? And you can see as I adjust the width down, I can make it so it's just one fixture at a time or spreading over multiple fixtures. Now, if I go ahead and record this into a queue onto playback nine, clear my programmer, set the name of it, and let's call it dim effects, bring up my playback, you can see my dimmer effect running. One setting you might need to take care of checking is in the setup window, view settings, playback, effects can subtract, and selecting this one here, intensity effects can subtract, and changing this to yes. Once you set this to yes, will allow your effects to subtract once they're stored into queues, like I've got running here. So that's an introduction to effects with Magic Queue. We're now going to move on in the next video and have a look at group masters.